iron here because I feel like I can get there too and I just like my two iron better off this box. Not a great shot but a pretty sick, pretty good putt here. Just uh, didn't quite turn the way I thought it would. A little tap in par on the ninth hole to shoot one over on the front. Everybody and welcome back to the course vlog at the number one course in Kansas, Prairie Dunes Country Club. If you are here after the first video, welcome back. If you did not watch the first video, I recapped it at the beginning. I shot one over. Didn't feel like I scored as well as I could have with how well I hit the ball, but here we are. Got a chance to make some birdies and possibly post a decent round. Pins tucked on the right side here in the front of the green, and I'll just let my dad tell you how it went. Oh my back, that could be in. Puts me a hole in the I cannot afford that right now, man, not with all these witnesses. Not a hole in one, unfortunately, but still a tap in birdie. This hole is kind of a beast. Honey Locust, 538, par 4 or 5, depending on how you're playing it. I roped one down the middle of the fairway here, left myself a little seven iron in, and hit a perfect golf shot. Tracing the flag, landed it in the middle of the green, rolled it back, released right up to the pin. This was just one of those holes that went absolutely perfect. Left myself about a six footer for eagle, or birdie, however you want to play it. This is the hole I always see pictures of when I look up Prairie Dunes. It's a very narrow shoot down there about 100 yards out. You have to hit it in between that shoot to have a chance at hitting the green. It's a very beautiful hole. Hit a perfect shot here. Left myself about 70 yards in the middle of the fairway. And then this shot right here is where I got frustrated. So I hit right of the flag because it kind of looks like the green is going to kick it back to the left. This thing lands and kicks really hard to the right. Now this is, I just had no idea this was here. I was aimed right at the flag thinking it was going to kick back to the left. Look at this massive slope over here. And my ball's not even on the green. It's 20 feet off. I got an impossible chip coming back. Just wish I knew that's what I did up there. Now in hindsight, I probably played this shot wrong. I tried to fly it up to the top of the slope and get it to spin. That was never gonna happen. I should've just bumped it up the slope and tried to roll it out as much as I could. That's why they were watching our shots. They were trying to see if we knew what it was gonna do when it got up here. It's hit so far in this hole. I've hit three shots exactly the way I wanted to. Yeah. And now I gotta make a 15 footer for par. Nothing left to do now but hit a perfect putt and hope it goes in, which I do. And now I'm gonna bitch a little bit more. <laughs> I understand my frustration. Number 13, Sumac, 452 from the back tees. It is a dog leg left par four. Hit this thing a little farther left than I wanted to. Got a really good kick off the bunker. Got into the first cut. I think I have 192 here, so I rope a seven iron right at the flag. And I think you can hear it there. I hit the cart path over the green. Bounced straight up in the air. Now I'm realizing I shot the wrong yardage. <laughs> the yardage is actually 160. Oh my fuck. Yep. Yeah. Can't really see it here, but I find my ball way over the green. Um, just didn't have time to set up the camera. Hit it over the green, back to the front. 
chipped it up there to about six feet, left myself a very ticklish bogey putt, and very fortunately was able to knock it in. Damage control, baby. This is number 14, Cottonwood, 409 yard dog leg left, par four. Knocked one out there into the fairway to the right. Hit a nice little 120 some yard wedge here. Hit a 54 degree, landed a little bit past the flag. No spin back, but left myself a little birdie putt. Also, make sure to replace your divots, folks, especially at a nice course like this. Another birdie opportunity. I actually felt really good about this one for some reason, but it did not end up falling. Another easy par. Number 15, the shoot, very aptly named. Uh, if you see here, the trees are very narrow, somewhat resembling, some might say, a shoot. Another one of the uh, holes that you always see pictures of when you look it up online. Pins in the left side here hit a very good shot right through the chute. A little eight iron knocked it to about 15 feet here. Put a really good roll on this. Gotta love watching those putts fall, especially on smooth greens like that. Number 16, blue stem, 431, little dog leg right uh, par four. I hit this one a little bit left, but luckily, since I'm hitting a two iron, galaxy brain mode, stop short of the bunker. Left myself a little nine iron into the green. Nice shot, really good shot here into the fat part of the green. Left myself about a 30 footer for birdie, which again, just snuggled it right in there. Gave it a really good chance though. Looked like it was gonna fall. Number 17, this is the par five Pheasant Hollow, 531. Playing downwind, very gettable today. Hit an absolutely perfect driver here, and I thought I hit the fairway, but what's interesting about this hole is the landing area, like 315, 320 off the tee, it's a, it's a mound. So if you hit it into that area, if you're not in literally the dead center of the fairway, it's gonna kick out of the fairway, which is a really interesting design. Um, I can choose to be upset about it, or I can just appreciate the architecture. So I wound up in just the right rough, not a bad spot, had a pretty good lie, nice little seven iron, I think I had like 198, 200 to the pin, uphill, a little bit downwind. Knew it was going to be a flyer lie, so I gave a little half swing kind of thing there. Landed it, I probably landed this five feet from the hole, just kicked straight over the back, and here I am realizing that I misclubbed myself. I keep forgetting on greens like this, you got to land it short or it's going to kick over. Got a very delicate chip here. It looks pretty flat, but you got to land it high with a little bit of spin right onto the green. As you can see there, I barely even landed it on the green. Got all the way down to the hole. Another three footer for birdie and God, that is just so frustrating. Again, didn't give it the time it deserves. Didn't feel it out. Missed it. Another lost shot to the to the greens, but that's what you got to expect when you go play a course like Prairie Dunes. All right, the 18th hole, evening shadow, 396, elevated tee box, hitting down into a fairway that's, I would have guessed, 30 to 40 feet below you. Not an incredibly hard hole, but when the wind kicks up and there's money on the line, I'm sure it can be a very difficult par. Left myself about 115 here. Tried to hit a little knockdown sand wedge, 54 degree. Pins in the back, I landed this thing probably four feet too far, kicked over into the bunker. Left myself a very, very delicate bunker shot here. Green runs very hard away from me. Had to just barely get it out, land it on the fringe. If I'd have hit it one foot farther, it would have been a lot better, but the slope took it away from the hole. Left myself about a 10 footer for par here. And that was a genuine fist pump, and it's a little bit embarrassing. I thought that putt was to shoot 69, so I was very excited about that. I mean, obviously, I would have liked to have shot 66 or whatever. I probably could have shot, but yeah. That putt right there to shoot 69 was huge. It was a 70. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you so much to the guys at Prairie Dunes for giving us the opportunity to play this course. Uh, it was amazing. I really am glad I was able to play it. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Deuces. But before I let you guys go, I've got a couple things to cover. First of all, parpointsgolf.com. If you want one of these cool hats, download Parpoints Golf in the App Store, 
set a course record, screenshot it, tag them on Instagram, and they will get you one of these hats if you're one of the first 100 course records. If not, no worries. You can always buy them for 25 bucks at parpointsgolf.com. Next, All-Star Pro Golf. And these infinity gloves right here, this is not just advertising, I'm 100% serious. I save these for tournaments. They are thinner, tackier, and better than any other glove I use. I use my gloves for my other sponsors while I'm practicing. I use these in tournaments. They are the real deal, the best part. They're only 10 bucks. Head over to All Star Pro Golf. You gotta get six at a time, but $10 for a glove like this, come on now. Worth it. Finally, Patreon. If you would like to support me, head over to Patreon. Five bucks a month, you get all my videos five days early. Plus, I'll give you some swing advice. And if you want a structured Zoom lesson, there's also some tiers for that. In addition to all other kinds of game improvement content on Patreon. So, if you would like some more information about that, check out the description. It's all down there. Deuces. Thank you guys. Love you. Peace out.